ill looks. Sometimes you just need to see a movie about a guy with no legs who keeps two shotguns in his wheelchair. If you must. And based on this poster art alone, who wouldn't want to see a movie called Mr. No Legs? Or The Amazing Mr. No Legs, depending on what poster you're looking at. Please, The Amazing Mr. No Legs is my father's name. I expect subtlety out of a movie with taglines like no one wants to meet him face to face or don't cross him or he'll cut you down to size. Yeah, that's why we need to crash a fucking car into him. Even if you've never seen anyone like him. I've seen Ironside. Wait, this movie features the Joey Chitwood and the Danger Angels? They're like Casper and the Angels, only fucking dangerous. All of this would be great if the movie actually starred Mr. No Legs. In reality, the movie is about two cops investigating a drug ring led by a mobster and his henchman, Mr. No Legs. It'd be like if you titled The Spy Who Loved Me Jaws, and I can think of a couple reasons why they may run into difficulty there. But the really intriguing thing about the movie is that it's written by Jack Cowden, who TV audiences may remember as the co-creator of Flipper. The film's director, Raquel Browning, was not only the other co-creator of Flipper, but also directed several episodes of it when he wasn't busy being the creature from the Black Lagoon. This film is one of the few non-Flipper-related projects that the two worked on together. Let me put it to you like this. It'd be like if you found out Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, was from the creators of Lassie. Now let's just hope that this movie at least feels like a theatrical release. <laughs> Makes sense. I think this movie is about nothing. Here old men are forced to make vibrators that you can smoke once you finish masturbating. Not even 30 seconds in, and the movie is already starting to lose focus. But it's nice enough to install an elevator for Mr. No Legs. This is where they make their drugs and build the world's most secretive fort. And done. You want most of it to end up on your shirt, right? Can we get some dialogue in here? How's it going, Tony? Fine. Mmm, that's nice. Carry on, then. My girlfriend's a pothead. She's gonna love this bouquet. Don't worry, there's more dialogue. Yeah. It's about time. Tonight? Sure. Bob Newhart's phone gag got way lazier over time. Also, we've moved up to pills now. Get to work. Keeping with the filmmaker's aquatic trademark, the dealers go to see Flipper, Flipper, Faster than fucking lightning. No one you see is stronger than he. Good, the cops are here. All right, break it up. We can't have multiple Frank Zappas running around the place. Yes, fight, fight. <laughs> Woo, kick to the stomach by credits. I wonder which title the movie's gonna use. Amazing or not amazing? <laughs> Gee, I can't imagine why they changed it. Am I watching a movie or playing an arcade shooter? This is the first time I've seen the credits break up the fight, as if the words themselves are the bouncer. And then Flipper let the man die. Mike, go ahead and book these guys. Uh, let's go, Scott. And remember, the credits get the collar this time. No, no, you idiot. It's Mustache Thursday. You grew out everything but the mustache. Excuse me, I was promised a Mr. No Legs. Ooh, heads are gonna roll. What? That's not tasteless. That's what the plot summary says. But some of the workers are stealing drugs, and there's only one way to deal with that. Plan on starting your own operation here? Well, I was gonna suggest giving them a warning. I, 
highly disagree with taking the word amazing out of this. I just saw the amazing Mr. No Legs fight the amazing atheist, and the amazing Mr. No Legs won within seconds. Oh boy, this is getting exciting! I don't need to see you unpacking to set up the next scene. Please, just skip ahead. I gotta go. Um, meanwhile, at the movie's rap party, it's a little early for that. You haven't finished yet. Pardon me, people, pardon me. Oh, God, I'm so businessy, 70s, business, handsome, 70s. At least the movie's going somewhere. You guys mind finishing unloading? There is a party that I need to get back to. This is our villain, Mr. D'Angelo, or as he's known on the streets, Mr. Legs. And one of his clients is Luke Halpin? Sandy from Flipper? Didn't that dolphin teach you to stay away from drugs? Halpin plays Ken, and his girlfriend is against him stockpiling drugs and dog turds. This causes some tension. Oh, yeah, and what about the girls who OD'd in the dorm the other day? What about them? Can you guarantee to me, Ken, that your stuff didn't kill them? Can you guarantee me that? And don't even get me started on the missing money. What about the missing money, Ken? I'm sure this will end with the two of them seeking counseling. I can't leave. I won't let you. Ken, you can't stop me. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you what. Ken! Honey, I told you not to turn on Lassie in my presence. You're just asking me to throw a head through a TV. Ah, uh, good. Help is here. Quick question. Can I keep her legs for myself? There may be a problem here. Just her brother. What about her brother? He's a cop. No, his legs were severed and stuffed by a cop! Here, this'll make it look like an accident. Injector with 50 cc's of slapstick. It's so obvious. She OD'd, hit the TV, and died in the back lawn. And the best part is, no dolphins saw anything. Case closed. Leave it to me. I know how to dispose of evidence. Then why even make it look like an accident? We'll make it look like Nazi zombies did it. They've been wanting revenge on Luke Halpin since Shockwaves. Our hero is Chuck, played by veteran character actor Richard Jekyll, but first, some bad news. Well, it appears she OD'd. Oh, no. Not that way, not her. My sentiments exactly. I feel like you're not genuinely shocked. I think we could get a worse reaction from her brother Andy, played by Girth Reynolds. No! Perfect! Next scene. If you come to one bar to drink away the sadness of your dead sister, I'm not so sure this is the right bar. It's like a showbiz pizza before animatronics. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special added attraction I know you'll enjoy. Ooh, please let it be Johnny Charo! That million-selling record group, the Fantastic Mercy, singing their latest release, I Still Remember Love. Oh, who? What? Is it too late to bring in Johnny Charo? Do you still like to watch the rain? Someone come get their fucking parents! I don't know how good this music mixes in with the visuals. I still remember love sometimes. Well, there's no mixing in the sound either, so why would anything else in this movie mix together? Now let's give it up for Biff Tannen and Sandra Locke! Anyway, Andy's legs have been eaten by a living blanket monster. Is no one's legs safe here? Uh, hey, you're getting your Caligula knockoff in my Mr. No Legs. If this room were any more 70s, his mustache would do the hustle. Not exactly sure what Chuck's trophies are for, but I guarantee it's not for fixing the fucking focus. 
Chuck is assigned to team up with Andy so they can solve the case, which is a good idea because that instantly fixes the focus and the lighting. At one point, the lighting and the focus fix itself in the same shot. Well, under the circumstances, would you? Either the lighting guy woke up or Chuck just had a great idea. There's two things you'll notice a lot of in 70s exploitation films. Mustaches and this car. But not all at once. That would be confusing. Let's check out this crime scene. Oh, there must have been a fight. Uh, either that or quite a party. Party cop's dad knows a good party. There's no garbage, but there's a broken TV. Must be some party. Anyway, at Ferris Bueller's house. I can't believe how far you've come in such a short period of time. Thanks, Dad. Mm, sexual chemistry. It's not cloak and dagger, it's undercover. Well, I wasn't impressed by your undercover performance last night. Two things turn on Margot: Swimming pools and saying that Mitchell is inadequate in bed. Sure, sure, we could stick around the police station, but where there's water, there's flipper directors. Let's do our work outside. The only bad part of owning your own Mr. No Legs is that you have to plug him in every 30 minutes or he gets cranky. I told you never to interrupt me when I'm eating. It's your friend downtown. Mmm, lover's quarrel. Lloyd Bachner's just upset because his son Ellis may have a cocaine problem. Mr. No Legs himself is played by a man named Ted Volrath, a Korean War veteran who lost both of his legs due to injuries in combat. While this is his only known film role, Ted also made a name for himself by becoming the first person to earn a black belt in karate from training in a wheelchair. Oh, please tell me this movie has karate in it! Never mind the karate, we need to see that Chuck and Andy chemistry. With all the nice places in town, what you bring me down here for? Maybe it has something to do with the way I was raised. You were never raised, you grew. Getting too bored for this shit. But Chuck's profiling sense is tingling. He's up to his neck and dead, I'll tell you that. That's how come he's coming out of there. He could be a pusher. Oh, he's a pusher, all right. But what he's pushing, you stroke, you don't smoke. That's Huggy Bear, you asshole. He's on your side. Anyway, let's cut to Artie Ziff from The Simpsons for no reason. Can I buy you a drink? I'd love it. What do you have? I'll have another beer. Another beer for the young lady, please. I'm not sure what this scene has to do with anything, but I think I know what the twist is going to be. Well, look at here, but I know bitchy Bessie. When did the fuzz let you out, nigger? Don't nigger me, you damn white-ass stoolie! Oh, stoolie! What? Um, the twist is a race riot? Well, I wasn't expecting that. Not even installing a ramp would help this movie get to where it's going. And then she's murdered as the bartender just watches. That black bitch! <laughs> Oh, never mind. He took care of that guy. Mr. No Legs, however, sets things right just before the cop comes in, looking like he severely needs to be caught up on what just happened. <laughs> this movie is made by more drunk people than Bat Pussy. Andy, what happened? Didn't you like the service or what? Service is fine. We need to clean up the floor show. <laughs> At least two people are dead! Dumbasses fighting with stools and broken bottles. There were two swords right there. Eh, let's just leave the bartender to clean up this shit. Bird. That's the look of a man who has to frequently shut down his bar due to bottle stabbings. While everyone else hangs out at the carnival, I want to spend more time with Mr. No Legs. <laughs> I know of someone whose vagina is used for handicap parking. Chuck calls up Andy to make sure he's still roasting in turkey gravy, while the villains plan on stealing Ken's body. Um, just because... I'm sorry, I don't have any Wilson listed. 
I believe he's a John Doe. Well, then how are you going to know him? Well, I was uh, personally acquainted with the kid. Seems legit. Who needs to tell this to the police? Hey, wait a minute. This movie is exactly why you don't smoke the prop drugs. Don't worry, Chuck still comes armed with a joke. You alright, Andy? Huh? This is the liveliest morgue I've ever been in, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Perhaps you should let the guy out of the freezer. All the pieces are coming together. Does this mean he's, he's involved in the organization? You bet it does, mister. We got us a positive connection. Get out of my fucking morgue and let me fuck the bodies in peace. Mr. No Legs is too busy killing some other guy, which had to be done because, again, it instantly fixed the movie's lighting. Andy's running late, though. He can't find his gun. Take mine. You call this a weapon? I guess it's gonna have to do. I mean, that's practically a pellet gun. But seriously, you should probably find your missing gun, officer. Sorry for being late. I also lost my car and had to steal this one. <laughs> How does he expect to find any more clues with these villains' superior hiding skills? <laughs> like a chameleon. Serves you right for not seeing this guy in the first place. <laughs> It's okay. Both the heroes and the villains are fucking stupid. Although someone does finally use a sword, Andy makes the right call by getting the fuck out of there. I don't know who this guy is, but I'm guessing he's the one stealing all the PCP. <laughs> and the sword can fucking grow! You know what they say, live by the sword, die by really shitty editing. And now it's Chuck's turn to show up and wonder what in the hell just happened. Anyway, more poolside footage. Your Billy Beer, madame. D'Angelo wants to finish off Mr. No Legs for stealing everyone's scenes. Be careful of that wheelchair. We'll separate him from that play thing right off. Yeah, that wheelchair has a mind of its own. Just like in that shot on Shidio movie no one will ever see. Surely Mr. No Legs can't be that hard to kill. <laughs> now that's impressive and all, but guys, just shoot him. Now I'm just sad we never got the Mr. No Legs and Crippled Masters crossover that we deserved. This movie makes dreams come true. You want to see Mr. No Legs do karate? Ask and you shall receive. But seriously, guys, you could just shoot him. Meanwhile, Walter Thornton had to move away from screenwriting and into drug dealing because his wife kept ruining his damn scripts. A nice parking, asshole. I know of someone who's gonna shotgun blast you to the face. Now let's go in blasting and wrap this whole case up. 70s policing. Sorry, sorry, we'd be here sooner, but it takes 20 minutes to load and unload a Mr. No Legs. Turns out Mr. No Legs has set them up so he can take over the drug ring himself. John Agar, what are you doing here? Gentlemen. Guys, just stop standing directly in front of him. There! Now, was that so hard? And by the way, yes, he is dead, and yes, He's no longer in the movie. The amazing Mr. No Legs! Things are heating up now. Gunfights, car chases, don't let this momentum die. Set up roadblock. Okay, was that cutaway really necessary? Oh, to be a fly on the lens while shooting this sequence. <laughs> Vehicle in pursuit now headed west on Magnolia. 
again, stop cutting back to whoever that is. It's really distracting. Nine seventy seven nine eighty. Do you still have the vehicle in sight? Look, I realize you promised your sister a role in the film, but this is a little much. Even though we see shots of the highway, I'm not sure John is driving, let alone on an actual road. Sorry, fellas, we got a flipper crossing. Gonna have to stop your car chase for a moment. And there's the budget. Half for the cars, and the other half for that dude's Oscar-worthy expression. Why is this movie still going? Your title character is dead. Oh, right. The bad guy needs to be stopped by rookie Judge Dredd. Don't worry, the real hero is still here. Suspect vehicle now approaching Picnic Island area. Bullet really did need random cutaways to a never-before-seen office worker during its famous chase scene. And you know what else it needed? wasn't part of the budget. That was the director's house. There's still 10 minutes of this movie left, and yes, all of it is this car chase. This sequence makes me miss the amazing choreography of Smokey Bites the Dust. Well, you couldn't have picked a better spot for your car to catch fire. Could be worse. Could be another son of Sam, and they stopped to let a train pass by. Oh yeah, and John Agar is one of the cops who turns out to be working with the villains. Every great car chase should barely involve shots of our heroes, plus have a villain who I hardly remember existing in the film. Seriously, Call Center Girl is in this sequence more than Chuck and Andy are. But these kids have been waiting here for years, and someone has finally crashed through their wall of beer boxes. Like all car chases at the time, it comes to an end due to truckers building a wall of ice. He may be dead, but rest assured he's given Chuck and Andy some names, and his toupee is very much still alive. Too late, boys. He's already on ice. It's like I told you, Andy. In this town, crime doesn't have a leg to stand on. I'm sure the ending credits will be just as awkward as the opening credits. Jesse was a bad man, and he had his wicked ways. Knowing sure the life that he lived would bring its own end. Mmm, the real star of the film. Andy's back! And who the fuck are they singing about? Well, in the genre of exploitation films that inexplicably have a bar lounge act spliced into them, I guess it's better than another Son of Sam. And yes, random bands having random performances in the middle of 70s exploitation films is more common than you would think. But sadly, not all of them feature Johnny Charo. Sure, Mr. No Legs may have featured a man in a wheelchair, murdering people with two shotguns and his amazing karate skills, but at no point was he defeated by a hero dolphin. Zero stars. That's good stuff. Want to see more Cinema Snob episodes? Do you like movie reviews from people in cars? How about animated cat detectives? Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stonedgremlinproductions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.
And you guessed correctly, I am a little drunk. <laughs>